the greatest two-way player of all time. That's the legacy, right? The debate over whether he's a generational talent or not. Tough one, because he's so quiet on the ice. Over 1,400 games played, 1,040 points, 19 seasons. 14 straight top five finishes for the Selkie. 12 straight top three finishes and an NHL record six wins. Two-time Olympic gold medal winner. Three-time All-Star. Three-time Stanley Cup finalist. And one Stanley Cup champion. In which he scored the game-winning goal in Game 7. Scored a couple goals in that game. Maybe the most influential Bruin to ever play the game. I've got him on the wall. The Bergeron and Bergeron. Wearing a Bergeron. Of course, there's Orr right above them. Thornton up above them, which, I don't know, just there. Chara right there. Yeah. And then Bork above Chara. Recency bias, sure. But Bergeron's right up there with them. In a different way. In a different way, but he's right up there with them. And he was my favorite Bruin. Is my favorite Bruin. And that's never going to change. I don't think it could. I didn't even mention all his accolades. <laughs> like, there's so many more to talk about. Do you know he won the Bruins Three Stars Award 13 times through his career? He just did it all, man. Oftentimes when they asked players around the league about who's the perfect hockey player, you'd get your fair share that would say Crosby and players like that. But Bergeron come up, came up every time he would come up. Every time. He's been so perfect for so long. And he deserves all the admiration he's receiving times 10. And of course, you're going to have your trolls and your pundits who sit there and go, he was overrated. Don't even bother commenting on them. Those people, A, have no fucking clue what they're talking about. They literally don't. Like that, that is a statement that just... If you ever need a statement to be like, oh, no one should ever listen to you about anything, like that's the kind of statement. Just proves it for you. Overrated. He was everything for this organization for 19 seasons. I guess it took him a couple of years to get going, so that's a little unfair, but... <sighs> the heart and soul of the team, man. The era, the core... It's over. It's done. That's it. On to the next. I want to say congratulations to a great career. A fantastic career. A, a, a career that I couldn't even properly explain. Just congratulations, Bergeron. Patrice. Do you mind if I call you Patrice? Do you know Velma's middle name is Patrice? Some of you might not. Velma, come here. This, who does not love being held, is Velma Patrice Bonner. And she perfect. She perfect. A little more aggressive than a Bergeron was, though. Be honest about that. Before I really get into it, like, comment, subscribe. Nailed it. I was thinking about grabbing some drinks and just, you know, letting loose today. Day off today. But I thought about what Bergeron would want me to do. And once I'm done recording and editing this, I'm going to do some dishes and I'm going to go to the gym. I'm going to do something to better myself. Then I'm going to get drunk. But first we're going to do what Bergeron would want me to do. That's what we're going to do. But congratulations to Bergeron on an impeccable career. Uh, I would love for you in the comments to share your favorite Bergeron moment or play on or off the ice. Uh, I know there's going to be a couple plays that come up a lot. But I'd like to go down memory lane and... I'd love to see a couple that I just don't remember or didn't expect or whatever that may be. Uh, don't feel bad if you're putting one that a lot of other people are putting. That's fine. <laughs> I'll rewatch everything. But yeah, mention your favorite Bergeron moment below uh, just for my sake. Because <laughs> I'm just going to start going down memory lane for a while. But I want to talk about something, a subject that keeps coming up since the end of the season. And now that the core is officially dead, right? The Bergeron, Marshan, Krejci. Krejci we can expect to retire now as well, I think. Uh, Chara, obviously already gone. That core is 
done. It's over. And that's okay to say. There are a lot of people who say that that core underperformed. I'm not going to call them overrated. The people who say they're overrated, I think, are very wrong. I think this team and that core was extremely capable. Uh, very, very high end. We had 15 years of competitive hockey from them. Really competitive hockey. So overrated feels wrong. Underperformed feels more interesting to me. And so I want to kind of look at the numbers since, we'll say 2005, since the lockout, and talk about if this team, if the Bergeron era underperformed, what they should have done, not what they could have done, because they could have won six cups with enough puck luck. So what they should have done. Since 2005, only four teams have won multiple cups. The Pens won three, the Hawks won three, the Kings won two, and the Lightning won two. That's eight, that's 10 of the 18 Stanley Cups that have been won since that 2005 lockout. You can make arguments about all of them with how certain cups were won, cap shenanigans, lockout years, or not lockout years, COVID years. You can make arguments for the reason some of these teams might not have been able to win multiple championships if things didn't really go their way, but I don't think it's worthwhile because then you get too nuanced in it all. But so 10 out of the 18 cups over the past 18 years were won by teams who had won multiple. Out of the other eight teams that have won, you can argue that two still have a chance to win more with their current core, the Avalanche and the Knights. I don't think anyone's going to argue with me about that. Detroit in 2008 was at the end of being a multi-championship team dynasty. They actually went to another finals. Like, that's a weird team that I'm kind of throwing out just because that's the time frame is odd to work with. That leaves five teams who, with the core that won the cup, cannot win it again or really likely won't. The Bruins, core doesn't exist, any, exist anymore. The Ducks, of course, that core is well gone. Canes, that core is well gone. Blues, that core is basically gone. And the Caps, which I just don't think Ovi is going to make another cup run. So that's what I'm throwing in there. So since 2005, that core won one and did not win again. The argument for if they underperformed or not is based on which teams you think that core was closer to. The four other teams that were one-offs or the multi-championship teams. And I think for those people arguing that they underperformed, you should compare the Bruins to those multi-championship teams. You should compare those cores because they're the only team that went to multiple cup finals out of those five. The Bruins went to three different cup finals. The Ducks, Canes, Blues, and Caps, just the one. And they went one for one. Good for them. In that sense, I think it's really fair to compare them to the Penguins, who went three for four in the finals through that 15 years. Lightning, who went two for four. Hawks went three for three. And the Kings went two for two. Good for them. And then the Bruins went a paltry one for three. Terrible. I think the easiest argument for this is put it in gambling terms. A core that you know is going to be good for a decade and a half. Where do you set the over-under on cups that they're going to win? And I think based off of the information we have, it's 1.5, right? So it's still, you can bet on it, basically. One is your bare minimum. You got to have at least one. Two and more is, hey, this is awesome. Like, you are exceeding expectations. And the reason I say it like that is because there are 23 teams over that 18 year stretch that made it to the finals. 23 and only 12 actually won the cup. And you can also look at those 11 teams that made the finals through that stretch that haven't won a cup in any of that time with that information, with 23 teams having actually made a final, setting the over under at 1.5 feels really fair because Think about all of those really good cores. I mean, Vancouver in the early 2010s, late 2000s, that was a hell of a fucking team. There are a lot of teams that were really good for a two to three year stretch and either bad ownership or injuries or just one or two bad moves. It's a plethora of reasons that they just couldn't make it back or bad puck luck. You see some teams that just cannot get over the hump for years because it feels like every 50-50 play at the biggest moment goes the other way. If you start really digging into the last 20 years of hockey, you see a lot of teams that are like, damn, they never even made a finals? There's a lot of them. 
The reason I ramble on about all of this is because if you want to talk about a team that over an 18 year span went to three finals and only won one cup, and you want to mention them as underachievers, you have a point, but only in the most minuscule of ways. Yes, you would hope for two from this core, but two was actually like the, damn, we did it. There are people that act like we should have six cups through that stretch. And although our teams have been really good and competitive, you are ignoring all the other really good and competitive teams on those years. It's not like, hey, your team's really great. They should win every year. The Patriots ruined people's minds about how hard this actually is to put together multiple championships on one core. You have years that are wasted by injuries or bad luck or simply running into a better team from time to time. Not to mention, once in a while you get a series where, yeah, the officiating comes into play. Does it purposely come into play? No. But you have just an awful stretch of four to six games where you can't get a call. There are a plethora of reasons why you may not win a cup one year. And they're all excuses. The goal is the cup. The goal will always be the cup. Excuses don't pay the bills. But if you've been to three finals, you have underachieved by not winning two out of the three. You underachieved at the last 1% of the job, which is fair to say. But I cannot look at this core and these players and think of them as underachievers simply because they were one game away from being talked about in a completely different sense. And those who are like, should have won four or five, you're unrealistic. You are simply unrealistic because no one, even the Penguins, who you can argue had a better core for at least an eight-year stretch, you could argue that. They only won three. And they went to four. We won one, we went to three. I don't believe this... Core is chokers. I don't believe they're overrated. They underachieved at the highest point. That last 1%. 15 years of brilliant hockey. And again, I can't stress this enough. If you don't feel like that, and you feel like this core was not what you would have liked it to be, look around the league. Because there are 26 fan bases who I think would trade with us in a heartbeat. Including some cup champions over the last few years. Because we got 15 years of excellent hockey. And some of them got three. And a cup. I just think there's a lot of teams that would trade. And I think if game 7 in 2019 goes differently, just that one game... This whole conversation changes so much. I think it's unfair to say that this core was not one of the best cores the Bruins have ever had. One of. Maybe not the best, but one of. In terms of entertainment, they've given me far more than I can expect and far more than most other people my age who watch hockey have gotten. That is damn true. So if you want to look at Bergeron's core as underachievers, you get to. You get to in a mathematical sense. But I simply don't agree with it. I don't want to look at them that way. And in reality, I really don't have to. What a brilliant team. What a brilliant career. Plenty of people are going to ask what's next. And I'm going to be honest. We're fucked. No, not really. But I am going to enjoy the backlash when Carlo gets announced as the next captain. I'm kidding. Obviously, it's going to be Marshand. That feels like free money to me. I guess they could... You know, go crazy and do a McAvoy kind of thing, but I don't know. Feels like feels like it's Marshand. But in all honesty, I don't know what's next short term. This drastically lowers any sort of odds for a real deep run next year, but it doesn't make it impossible. Krejci is sure to retire now as well. Going into a season with no true 1C is a huge hit. And with how difficult player movement is right now, I don't really think we're going to make a big swing for a trade. It feels to me at this point... They're going to go with the wait-and-see approach for the first few months. Be conservative sellers at the end of the season. Uh, or at the end of the day, uh, towards the deadline, if it's not going well, I should say. 
I think they just re-sign Frederick, re-sign Swayman, and see how the first three months goes. That's it. That's boring, but I think they want to see how a couple more guys develop. See if Patois can make the jump next year. I doubt it, but it's possible. They need time. They need time. And luckily, this team has enough pieces in place that even if this season's a little subpar, the return should come quickly. We just got to fill in the most important, second most important role in hockey. Most important role? Mm. One C versus goalie. You tell me what you think is more important. I'll end the video with a closing statement, though. From Bergeron's statement, I'm going to read it off to you. Just a small excerpt from it. Please know that every time I took the ice, I tried to compete for you the right way, you being the fans of Boston. And off the ice, I tried the best I could to give back to the community that supported me. The connections and friends that my family and I have made here are unquantifiable. Good word. Boston is and will forever be a special place for me and my family. If there is one player who is allowed to say that they tried to compete the right way, it is Patrice Bergeron. He is the first player who should come to mind for that. And this fan base is so lucky to have gotten to watch him for 19 years. This is heartbreaking. It hurts. It feels like being dumped. Not as malicious as that, but it feels like it. I knew it was going to hurt. I didn't expect it to hurt this much. Watch this guy for almost 20 years. And just cheered for him in every circumstance and was proud of him this guy that's what eight years older than me <laughs> i don't like to try to idolize athletes I, I think they should deserve their private life and we make the jokes and everything like that but when it comes to a true human to human i try not to idolize them them in a crazy way i don't know if that's possible to do with bergeron I think you can't help but just be in awe of who he is as a person and as an athlete. And He didn't have the generational talent that most others we talk about like this have. Bergeron just worked. Always worked. And very talented, obviously. But he played the game the right way in every way. And that's what made his career. Not because he was better than everybody else on the ice. Better looking for sure, but... Just played the, the game the right way. <sighs> I am not going to cry. Yet. Anyway, we're recording the Short Shift Podcast tonight. We're going to talk more about this. Go Bees! Go Bees!